Awesome. So, hello, beautiful people. I am Jesse the Truth. I am Tierica. With a special, special guest now, a very popular vegan chef. She's just been on NBC, you know what I'm saying, bringing vegan wealth and health to the people. Chiwe Orobuchi at Cheese Vegan Kitchen. I'll check her out. She got amazing vegan food. She's a registered nurse, if I'm not mistaken. So she has insight into the medical field. So she has brilliant insight into bringing you health and wellness. So... Thank Let's y'all, thank started. y'all, thank y'all so much for having me. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Her vegan food looks amazing. Again, <laughs> if y'all y'all got to go check her out on Instagram, she has plenty of foods that can help y'all get into the, you know what I'm saying, plant-based eating lifestyle. Well, obviously, we're in the new year where everybody wants to be a new me. New they want to eat me. better, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And she has brilliant recipes that's going to help you out with that, from pizzas to treats to whatever you want, and you want it plant-based, she got you. Yes, I love, so I love <laughs> it. I love it. Absolutely. So today we're going to start off with put it in your mouth. I know that sounds graphic <laughs> to most, but I think it's because people have a, a perception of vegan food or plant-based eating that when they look at it, they snare their nose up and they're like, oh, what is that? Yet yeah, they will, they won't do that when they have a big 10 pound steak on their, you know what I'm saying, on their yeah. plate and it's just dead flesh that you're literally eating. And again, we're not trying to pick on you. We're not trying to be pushy about it, but just do understand what you're putting in your body because at the end of the day, what you put in your body affects your body in ways that you may, you know what I'm saying, contribute to sicknesses, illness, and you know what I'm saying, that dependency on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so much that it affects. So uh, the occurrence that you can relate that to is what you're putting in your body. Because usually that's the first sign. And again, I believe if I'm not mistaken, you went vegan because you had face issues. You know what I'm saying? Acne and stuff like that. Just like you Same did. here. So, you know what I'm saying? And it helped clear you up because you look amazing. You're Thank out here you. glowing now. Thank you. So, analyzing eating habits and how they're passed down to us. Analyzing eating habits. So, really, eating habits start with, you know, generations, generations, generations. Uh, I hear... Most people say that this is how my great-great-grandma used to eat, and it passed it down and passed it down and passed it down. So, like, let's say I get a patient, and we ask them their health history. They say, oh, well, you know, this runs in my family, that runs in my family. And in the back of my mind, I have that thought process of it's not necessarily the illness that runs in the family. It's the habits and the way that they're eating, the things that they're eating that runs in the family and you see that passed down just, you know, with health illnesses, with, you know, looking at their body mass index, all those things. No, absolutely. And I think we touched on that before in our earlier episode with Bravo. And we talked about like, you know what I'm saying? Usually in our communities, the black and brown, that we often like eat certain foods that relate back to our past times. You know what I'm saying? As far as like soul food, chillings and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Heavy, like, you know what I'm saying, neck bones and stuff and our greens and stuff like that. We we find ways to, like, not eat healthy. Like, with our yams, you usually are loaded with, like, Sugar. butters and sugars and yeah. stuff like that. With our greens, you got to put bacon in there and stuff like that. It's and just, not only that, it be so cooked down, you lose the nutrients that's exactly. in the food. You know? Absolutely. And again, <laughs> like you said, a lot of people usually come in there like, oh, this runs in my family, that runs in my family. And it's just like, man, your eating habits are running through your family. Exactly. And it's crazy to me because a lot of people don't like changing up their eating habits at all. Mm-hmm. Like They make excuses for it. They, they, they rather patch them up. And then this brings us into like the whole vaccine thing. Obviously, we'll never tell nobody not to go get a vaccine. I always tell people, do what's best for you. Mm-hmm. Do what makes you feel safe. But do your research because, again, you you will go get the vaccine and continue eating the way you're eating, interacting the way you're interacting, not exercising, sitting on the couch. You'll do all these things, but you'll feel safe because you got a vaccine, but you won't change up the one major thing that they're not telling you to do. Change your eating habits. Get up off, you know what I'm saying? Get up off the couch. Go exercise. They're not telling you to do these things, and yet you wonder why you're getting sick still. You wonder why you have a higher risk of getting sick because I, I I know people that had COVID a couple of times, and it's just like you're not changing up your eating habits. You have to do things and eat things and operate a certain way to build your immune system. Exactly. You know that's what's going to keep you healthy. But sitting on the couch and 
you know, enjoying the processed food, none of that helps build the immune system. Exactly. So how does your family feel about you, like, going into this vegan lifestyle? Um, so I am first-generation American-born Nigerian. So uh, my parents immigrated from Nigeria. So they a lot of the traditions that they have, it's still, you know, instilled in our family. So with their diet and lifestyle, of course, meat was heavily, you know, based part of the diet, but uh, a lot of fruits and vegetables were incorporated in their diet, and they were very big on home-cooked meals. So my family, they don't eat out. And I did get to influence, well, I was actually influenced with me going plant-based because my siblings, you know, dibbled and dabbled with it before I did, before I went, you know, head on with it. But, you know, to take a lot of the things that I learned and take it back to my parents and you know, have them switch up things with their diet. They were very receptive to it. Um, they're very big on conscious, cautious about what they eat anyway. So um, uh, a lot of the things that I did is I made a lot of traditional Nigerian dishes. I made them plant-based so that they kind of get that, oh, okay, so I don't have to have meat with this. And I can, this still tastes good. So that was kind of the good part. And thankfully, like my family, for the most part, all of them are on board with the whole plant-based eating they meant they might not be majority plant-based but for majority of the week or a good part of the week they'll do no meat no dairy all that stuff so it's it's exciting that's awesome I like no that's that. always good i think I, it's important that we advocate to like moderation like we ain't always telling people hey cut cold turkey not a lot of people can do that uh we don't tell you to just you know what i'm saying do it without you know what I'm saying, your research, but we do tell you at least incorporate, you know what I'm saying, meatless Mondays or like, you know what I'm saying, days out the week where you don't have no meat, uh, you minimizing the amount that you're eating. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get the ones that are on sale. I do think a quality thing is important mm -hmm. because a lot of times people will go into the supermarket store and they'll see the meat. Oh, Oh, they marked it down. It's six ninety nine, and There's it used to be reason like twelve. Why they marked yeah, it and down? Yeah, it's a reason why. <laughs> so the quality is poor. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Getting quality cuts of meat will probably be better for you than eating poor qualities. Uh, again, Even portion sizes, like upping the the sizes of the vegetables, you know, and then minimizing the amount of like chicken wings you put on your plate, or you know. Because veggies should always be a big part of your meal anyway. They help keep you full longer. Uh, meat's going to keep you full for a little while, and then you're going to be hungry again. So incorporating veggies into your meal is always important. So what is, like, their favorite meal that you veganized for them that they was like, I can't believe this? Um, I would say my family as a whole, um, of course, like my, my parents, my grandma, they like the Nigerian dishes that I veganized. So um, it would be the, what, so in Jamaicans call it, what, veggie patties or patties. Mm -hmm. um, it's similar to what, empanadas. Yeah, I know but what you're talking we, about. we call them meat pies. And I just, I call them meatless meat pies. So that was like one thing my family was like, oh my gosh. like That actually like, sounds really good. Because <laughs> okay, I ain't going to lie, like, that's the one thing I kind of <laughs> miss. I, I haven't had... <laughs> Too many places that had like a Jam Jamaican like patty or like that or like a meat pie. So I'm like, oh, that sounds Yes, delicious. no, that was like um, what I, a lot of the things that I made because I, I went vegan back in 2017, like strict all the way vegan back in 2017. Um, I couldn't find vegan foods that I liked. So that's when I started playing in the kitchen and I, I realized, oh my gosh, like it's, it's fun be being vegan when you get in the kitchen, you can control your calorie intake, your oil intake, and the sugars and all that stuff and still make foods that you like. So I think now I'm, I'm seeing, seeing this boom with veganism and it's so mainstream and you see um, so many meats that, you know, I don't even know where they come from that are vegan and so many <laughs> items that are like, oh, this is vegan. And it's just like, it, it's now marketable. You know? No, absolutely. And I think that's the thing that, like, we try to tell people to be careful about when you transition over because just because something is vegan don't mean it's healthy for you. You can transition over and still either gain weight or be still stuck, experience stuck in, yeah. the same health issues, you Ex know, especially you when it comes to those sodium. faux meats. Like, 
Yeah, faux meat thing is I don't really care for them too much. I'll use them here and there, but I don't like them. It's not too many brands that catch my attention with it. Uh, obviously, the bigger one right now that's kind of overtaking Beyond Meat is impossible right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would just tell people be careful on that because obviously that's chemically engineered mm-hmm. because I don't know any plants that bleed. And, you None. know what I'm saying? So None. <laughs> this is not a shot at them because obviously they're just feeling the demand and it's nothing wrong with that in a sense. But as a consumer, you have to be mindful of your intake into that because I think that's that's don't easy go to from overlook. eating a burger like every day or every other day to deciding you want to switch to vegan. So now I'm going to eat a vegan burger every day or every other day. You don't want to get stuck in that type of um, cycle because that's what's going to be unhealthy for you. Exactly. I always tell people you got to you got to find a balance in it because yeah. uh, everything balance is going to help you make it fun mm-hmm. because obviously that still allows you to enjoy the indulgent side of everything, but while still keeping up your healthy habits. So mm-hmm. obviously. You know what I'm saying? You can have a vegan pizza here and there, vegan burger and stuff like that. But, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times you want to incorporate no faux, no faux meats into your meals and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Stick to stuff like lentils, beans, uh, mushrooms. mushrooms. <laughs> I think the hardest thing for people, though, with mushrooms is people don't like the texture of mushrooms. It's like they certain mushrooms are correctly. like real spongy. Yeah. Because I'm one of them people. They got to be done correctly. Like oyster <laughs> mushrooms, a lot of times people don't shred them. I, mm. I, I, say, I tell people like at least shred them a little bit so it's not a big bite. And they're not I, squishy. I won't name restaurants, but I've been to a couple places I where like too. they, yeah, they just fry them out. And like when you bite into it, you still pulling the mushroom with you. And it's like, oh, they take the whole hand mm. of mushroom and just fry them up. No. Yeah. Or, mm-hmm. like, some people don't cook, like, their portobellos all the way, so it's real spongy. Yes. And it's just like, ugh, I can't do this. I think the thing with the veganism that I'm seeing is it's not necessarily that a lot of people are, are going on a, a health craze. It's that they're trying to just say, I'm not eating meat. I'm not mm-hmm. eating animal products. And they're not even being health conscious. And that's why the market the industry has been able to push this faux foods and and fast vegan i'm not gonna lie i'm I'm curious to know how like like vegans who've been doing this for like decades feel about the like the new trend into it like are they excited about it Mm -hmm. or do they feel like they're kind of like Oh, there's no agenda. It. Yeah, they're they're commercializing. They kind of ruining what veganism was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. A lot of they they only had tofu back then to sell out stuff. Yeah. and of course a lot of them knew like mushrooms and stuff like that. But like beyond beyond meat, impossible cheese, uh, and sour cream. Rolls. Yeah, we got so many like substitutes for stuff that they would have to like create themselves. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm really curious as to know how they feel about that type of stuff. So being in the medical field, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? What's What's one of the things that I guess have conflicted with you about knowing the side of medicine and also plant-based eating and holistic health? Ooh, the thing that's been conflicting for me uh, definitely is seeing um, a patient come in. They're obviously not taking care of their health, have a long list of you know uh, illnesses and you know comorbidities and they rather take a pill to help with one issue and then another pill to help with another issue and another pill instead of let's change your diet, let's try exercise. And I actually had a patient, uh, you know, and I, I sat down with them, I sat down with their family, and I said, you know, if you just changed your diet and stopped eating these and everyone supported this patient and helped them, you know, this, this wouldn't even be an issue. And they said, I would rather just have the meat. Wow. And that was just like, it's, it's, it's not even, I, I don't even want to call it ignorance. I just, it's just like you're so stuck in your ways and the addiction that food has on them, it's to the point where you rather, you know, live to eat instead of eat to live. And that's what I've always, I always tell people to me personally, I feel like as humans, we have very self-destructive natures. We get easily addicted to things, whether it's technology, whether it's food, whether it's drugs and stuff like that. And I feel like certain like 
companies take advantage of that, especially the sure. pharmaceutical game. Uh, to big farm companies, y'all got the game on lock. Y'all are right up there with the government as far as having, you know what I'm saying, being the mob when it comes down to things. Mm-hmm. And just the amount of people that, like, choose medications. Because, I mean, me and you talked about it. Like, like you said, they'll prescribe one thing, but the side effect causes another thing. But they got a medication for that, too. That's going to cause something else that they got a medication for. And it's just a continued cycle of being so stuck. So they can make money. Exactly. It's just medical dependency. And it's just, I think, as humans, we've innovated and gone so far that we've really, like, separated being to the earth. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Realizing, like, hey, this food's not working for me. Let me, you know what I'm saying, incorporate this a little more. Hey, I'm feeling like this. My iron's low. Well, let me incorporate a few more beats to my meals. You know what I'm saying? It's always a way to subside however you're feeling to make you feel better with food that is actually from the earth for you. Mm-hmm. And I think, I don't know. Again, people are just so destructive. Yeah, the fact that they was just like, I'd rather take the medication. It's oh, yeah. the easy way out, and you don't have to do the work. You don't have to deal with actually trying and you know wanting to change you got to want to change it and sometimes people don't want to change they just want to stay where it's easy Mm -hmm. because doing something different is so far off it scares them sometimes Mm -hmm. you know so have you ever had any health like related issues before that now that you transition over like i no, actually um i thankfully i've been been blessed that no i haven't had any major health you know related issues except for my skin I've barely been I've always been physically active um as far as conscious about what I eat I was like so-so you know I I had my moments where a candy was more of my thing and it's like I would replace meals for candy so it's like I wouldn't eat meals and then eat candy it was like (laughs) one or the other for me but the older I got and how I noticed how it made me feel it's why I slowly you know and then, of course, being in the in the health field, that also had a, a play on, oh, my gosh, like, this is what these type of things do to the body. So, like, what cocaine does to the brain, sugar does the same thing. Like Oreos, they say <laughs> Oreos is just as addictive as cocaine. Exactly. So it's like, you know, as I began to learn those things, I'm like, wow, like, you know, really what we eat is what's killing us. I mean, in, in America, the leading causes of death is heart disease. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think the food industry has a close tie with the pharmaceutical game because, again, it's more profitable to keep you sick and alive mm-hmm. than to cure you and, you know what I'm saying, help you of what, you know what I'm saying, you're actually supposed to be doing. It's a business. Because, yeah, because a lot of people, like I told y'all before, I had high blood pressure before I went vegan. Uh, I was 260. All this weight on me, obviously eating bad, you know what I'm saying, indulging in Fuda Burger, Chick-fil-A, all these foods, you know what I'm saying, overdoing it because, again, it's it's in front of your face in the excess that it's so easy to always just do it that we don't realize, like, all right, maybe we overdoing it. So, like, when I transition over, like, that actually helped reduce my blood my blood pressure. Mm-hmm. And, like, thank, thankfully, I, I was able to reduce it before it got to the point where you have hypertension and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Because then once you do, like, irreparable damage, it's hard to come back from that. And I think the fact that people choose to just keep doing that damage instead of, like, hey, I already know I've been messing up. I know that the way I've been feeling is because of this food. But I'm just going to, you know what I'm saying, patch it instead of fixing it. And that's why I I think I was telling my mama last night because she told me she got shot. I was like, a lot of times people rather just, you know what I'm saying? Patch up they tire, yeah. then to get a new tire. Mm-hmm. You can patch it up, but it's still always gonna be a hole in your tire. Mm-hmm. So we gotta realize that the, that a lot of a lot of our foods are damaging, mm-hmm. and just like they're damaging, we also have that balance of healthy foods too. So the one damaged thing that a lot of people don't realize is sodium. Because obviously, you got to have flavor to your food. If your food don't have no flavor, you know what I'm saying? People accuse you of cooking like a Caucasian. <laughs> so they tell you, you know what I'm saying? It's a little bland. <laughs> Ain't no salt and pepper in there. Nothing. So I think, what do you think are ways to add huge flavor to dishes without overdoing it on sodium? 
So definitely my go-to, I don't use salt. I use herb salt. So um, I think Whole Foods has it. The herb salt that I, the specific brand that I have to try that. Um, But I mean, there's a rosemary, there's thyme, there's onions, there's ants, there's allspice seasoning, there's garlic, there's garlic powder, there's onion, there's so many seasonings. And honestly, all those seasoning combines, they have phytochemicals and nutrients and healing properties to the body that you're just getting to add on top of the flavor. So when I'm cooking, I add, I go through all my seasonings and I just throw everything in and I'm <laughs> tasting it as I go because I don't use much salt. But it's still really flavorful. It still tastes good and, and it's healthy at the same time. Yeah, I think some people too like don't realize like they overdo it on the salt and they rely on salts that aren't necessarily good for you. Like obviously, I so. like it's like really like 4,000 different types of salts mm-hmm. uh, I think if you watch this thing on Netflix, it's called Salts, Fats, and Acids. There's mm-hmm. something like, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they, they tell you, like, in Japan, like, there's 4,000 different types of salt. Each, uh, each salt has its own different type of, like, sodium content to it to where some's are, some salts are saltier than others. So it's just all about knowing about the salt and how much to use of it. You see salt. Obviously, I think sometimes I use pink Himalayan I salt. Sometimes yeah, pink Himalayan well. salt is good for you. Uh because a lot of time people are using salts that have other stuff to them. Like we was talking about in the previous episode, yeah. it's telling people how like some of our spices end up having chemicals added to them. Mm-hmm. It's not just, hey, this is onion powder. It's onion powder, sodium, phosphates, and other stuff like that. And it's just like, nah, if your spices aren't straight from the, you know what I'm saying, origin, you probably shouldn't be using them. Uh, a lot of times I know when I'm cooking and I don't want to add like onion powder or garlic powder, you know what I'm saying? I cook with the actual exactly. onion or garlic. That adds tremendous flavor to it. Uh, learning how to incorporate broths into your into your meals. That adds flavor. If you don't know how to make a broth, super simple. You have onion leftovers, mushroom leftovers, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You don't want to just throw them away. Throw them in a pot of boiling water and boil it down. And now you got a broth that adds flavor to your meals. Easy. But yeah, sodium is the big one. Especially, especially again, in the uh, black and brown communities because our foods have to have flavor. If they don't have no flavor, we ain't eating them. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I've when been you buy a lot of those like pre-done seasoning salts. The first ingredient is salt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the seasoned salt. <laughs> they have then, but it ain't only just salt. They have like salt, celery salt, onion salt, yeah. garlic salt, and it's just it's so much salt into one meal. Then you're seasoning it, and then you're adding an additional condiment to it that has salt in it. It's just so much sodium going into your body. It's just like man. Exactly. You can go to the grocery store. There's so many herbs next to your fresh fruits and vegetables that you can buy that you can use to cook with. It's like it's a lot. And they have so many. It's it's at the point where the beneficial ingredients in a lot of our fruits and vegetables, they don't even know. They haven't even discovered all of them. They're still at the point where they're learning the properties and the healing properties of all these fruits and vegetables. But it's almost like, what's the point? Because we're not even going to eat it anyway, you know? Absolutely. I mean, it's so many seasonings out there just beyond garlic powder, onion powder, because that's a lot of seasonings. That's the staple. That's, that's the, the staple. Those are the staples. <laughs> it's so many seasonings that are, like, good that add just tremendous flavor to them. Uh, sumic is another one. It has, I like, the citrusly taste. Uh, okay. It's really good. Uh, lime, juice. lime juice. Lime juice. Citrus foods add so much flavor to a lot of stuff that a lot of people don't use them. Like just squeezing a little bit of lemon into your, you know what I'm saying, to your mushrooms. You can give them like that lemon pepper taste without yes. having to use a lemon pepper seasoning. Exactly. I'd have to say smoked paprika is my favorite. I love smoked paprika. That's my favorite. I add that into a lot of <laughs> dishes, especially like barbecue dishes, smoked mm-hmm. paprika. Mm-hmm. Oregano, I add oregano into I a lot of like stuff. Like Oregano adds such a like burst of flavor to stuff. Yeah. But it, a lot of people just incorporate oregano into like pastas Spaghetti. and pizzas. Ants. 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 I don't know. A N I S E. I know what you're talking about. It's like the like the little star. Yeah. That and fennel. I like fennel. Fennel, yes. So fennel for people who don't know what fennel is, fennel is like a little seed. Uh you normally in come across it when you're eating like Italian sausages and stuff like that, it helps give it that burst of flavor. So if you add fennel into like a mushroom dish or something like that, you can essentially give it that sausage-like taste. Mm. 
without, you know what I'm saying, having to be sausage. Ooh, coriander and cumin. Cumin. Coriander is cumin. Good. Cumin. It's funny because it's just like everybody <laughs> pronounces seasoning is different. Is so it, I, what, how do you pronounce it? I said cumin. Oh. Cumin. 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 I don't know. <laughs> One of us is right, but you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. But that adds a good uh, burst of flavor. I usually use those heavily when I'm uh, making like cilantro lime black beans, uh, when I'm doing curries, because mm-hmm. that's like a big ingredient to, uh, what's the, gram masala? Mm. Is that? Yeah. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Cinnamon is another one of my favorites, because cinnamon is so versatile. Like you can add cinnamon into just like a regular dish, like food, like curries, other type of thing, I do, I usually incorporate it when I do roasted veggies too, mm-hmm. uh, or you can add it to like oatmeal, mm-hmm. waffles, nutmeg. She said nutmeg, and I'm saying allspice. Allspice oh, yeah. is so good. You know, a lot of people don't like nutmeg though. Yeah, they don't. Nutmeg. You you, you got to lose use a little bit of it, and it's like an ingredient in a lot of Nigerian dishes. Just, just a little nutmeg, I just a little allspice. pinch, a little pinch, and what they say like so. It's powerful. It's powerful. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, I, I usually incorporate that with like cinnamon and uh, ground cloves. Yes, because ground cloves is another strong one as the spice to it. Mm-hmm. But allspice is good too, especially like when you're making uh Jamaican dishes. Yeah, peas and peas and uh rice peas and, and peas. Rice, rice and peas. Yeah, a lot of it. If you don't know what rice and peas is, is really just a really good flavored rice with uh kidney beans that are called peas. They're not actually peas. Yeah, they're was, beans, yeah. but it still tastes really good. <laughs> Jamaican dishes have a lot of flavor to them. Yes. It's nothing like those Caribbean dishes. Uh, sad to say, I haven't had too many African dishes to know. Mm-hmm. So I definitely got to come through and get some African dishes because yeah. I've read a lot about them because there's a lot of like spices in the area. And I'm like, man, I know that just sounds delicious. <laughs> I got to I gotta make that myself or something, but. Definitely. I think uh, the biggest thing for people is getting outside of just American eating. Exactly. Because a lot of times, even like with Mexican foods, like they they think this is Mexican, but of, often not. It's like Tex-Mex. Yeah. So like nachos, enchiladas and stuff like that, like actually going down to like Mexico or like going to Africa, going to all these different countries and actually eating their food and their portion sizes, mm-hmm. I think is like radically different. Because a lot of people, like, will go out of, t- out, of, out of the country and, like, the countries know you're American by how you eat yes. because the por- their portion size is smaller. So you'll be like, is this all? And they'll be like, yeah, you're greedy. You're American. <laughs> <laughs> you, is this all you need? Yeah, seriously. I yeah. also feel like um, for, like, our food here in America, it's not very colorful. Like, our, our typical dishes, it's not very colorful. But when you go to other countries, like, their, their plates have so many different colors because you want to eat the colors of the rainbow. Like, Absolutely. That, when I get food that's colorful, it makes me happy. Exactly. And again, like Bravo <laughs> would say, we're not talking about Skittles. We're talking about no. fruits and vegetables. There we go. <laughs> not candy, y'all. Not candy, <laughs> not at all. So how can we pass these type of eating habits that we're just now coming into into the next generation? Because obviously I think that's the hardest thing for like people when they're raising kids coming up because if you send your kid off to school, Obviously, they they might come into contact with another kid that's not on the same wavelength. They have like candies and cookies with mm-hmm. them packed in their little lunchbox, and here's your child with apples and all this Celery type of stuff. Sticks and, <laughs> and they're just like, "I'll trade you." <laughs> so, I, well, I I definitely think that you know it starts at home. Like what you uh, just like us as adult as adults, what was instilled in us, a lot of the good you know things that were instilled in us, we've kept it and made us the adults we are today. So definitely how you you and your spouse um, decide to raise your children, I d- definitely like having it, making it something that it's it's fun where they don't feel like they're missing out. Um, try, you know, you're going to have to get in the kitchen if it's something that you're going to want it to be something with longevity to pass down. You're going to have to learn to cook foods because it – you cooking those foods, you making those foods, you're understanding what they want, what they need, what's healing to their body. You're educating them, but if you're constantly taking them out to eat, it's, you know, you're showing them that, hey, outside has better than what I have inside or what I can provide inside. So it really starts with you. And and one thing I always say is the change starts with me. So me, I at, at this moment, I can influence 
my friends, my family, and my circle, my work environment. And then, you know, whenever I get married or whoever my spouse is, and we have a family, then we can, you know, instill those same things, and it just continue, continue. But it's like in a world where it's social media and, you know, everything around you has such a big influence, you're going to have to be bigger than that. No, absolutely. And I think, like you said, it starts at home. It starts with you uh, incorporating and getting them to understand that. Because I know when I have kids one day, that's how I kind of want to bring them. I want to get them to the point to, like, when they're, like, 13, 14, when I feel like they're capable of making their own decision, cool. If you want to eat that, that's fine. But know that this is your background. This is what you came up eating. It's not a foreign idea to you to eat your fruits and vegetables. And I think flipping that, because that's what's hard for people to transition over to vegan, because now it's just, like, fruits and vegetables, like, they looking at it weird because that's not their upbringing, so it's a foreign idea to them. So I think flipping it and then allowing your children, once they get old enough, to decide, like, hey, all right, my parents raised me this way. Do I want to continue on to this? Or do I want to, like, kind of branch out and figure it out on my own? And I feel like if you lay that foundation down, even if they deviate away from it, they always can find their way back because, yeah. again, it's not That'll outside That'll be what's first nature to them, like – that's but again, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, it's a little difficult right now. You, we got to be bigger than social media. We got to be bigger than, you know what I'm saying, what our kids end up encountering. Because mm -hmm. they have so much access to stuff. Mm -hmm. Again, social media is a big one. Their peer group is also going to be an influence that we have to take in consideration. Because again, people are looking at you like, hey, he got <laughs> celery sticks in his lunchbox, man. But they'll see how that makes them feel. Once, once you're in a, because it's like, from, you know, birth to the age of 10, you have control over what they eat. You know, you're the one providing the roof over their head, the food. They don't have the money to go buy what they want to eat, you know? So outside of that, once they get to the point of, you know, they're out with their friends and they're doing things with other people or buying their own food, they'll see how it makes them feel because they've been on, they had such a long road, their essential years on such a really good diet that when they, go off and, you know, eat that junk food, they're not going to feel too good. And I think it's just being straight, too, like as far as adults with, like, each other, too, like our family members, because sometimes our family members are like, oh, you're depriving them of their childhood, oh, and they'll try yes. to sneak and give them food, <laughs> yeah. and it's just they thinking they being, like, a good aunt, uncle, grandma, whatever. It's just like, nah, you, you know what I'm saying? You raised me. Let me raise my child. You know what I'm saying? Just respect my wishes, or I might end up having to take them away from you. Mm -hmm. And, of course, nobody wants to do that. But just, like, I think as people, we got to respect people's decision on how they want to raise yeah. their kids. Mm -hmm. And if they want to raise them, you know what I'm saying, centered on veganism, they don't want them eating snack cakes and cookies and McDonald's and stuff like that, respect it. Because, again, you as an adult know that's not too healthy for you. So why are you introducing and getting this child addicted to it? Yeah. Because children have no filter. They don't know no better. So you introducing them to candy. All right, now they done got the sugar high. And like you said, sugar is addictive as cocaine. A child doesn't know how to process that, so all they know is candy is good. It tastes delicious. I want more of it. Oh, I don't want these vegetables. I want McDonald's. I want chicken nuggets and stuff like that. But it's because that's what you putting in their face and you're introducing it to them so young, they don't know no better. So now when they get older, they're just like, oh. That, you know what I'm and saying? even when you're giving them, you know, all this processed stuff and it has chemicals in it, even like the the already pre-made, you know, popular brands of baby food and stuff, that messes up their taste buds. So when they get older, all they want to do is eat meat, potatoes and salty stuff. But giving them fresh whole foods when they're young, that's what they're going to be used and to. And I feel like people have no no reason to sit there and go buy like pre-made baby food mm -mm. when it's so easy to make. You can really boil some carrots down and, then and blend, blend it, it up. up. Exactly. <laughs> they even have this thing now for babies where it's like, you can do it all in one. You can put the vegetables in this little thing. It steams it for you. Then you take it right out of there, move it to the next section, and it blends it up for you. Super easy. Super easy. Come and so. cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, th lot. I mean, that's the <laughs> biggest thing. People always like convenience. So if you like convenience, why not just do the convenient thing and yeah. make it yourself and save you some money? But now people like the convenience of, ah, oh, I ain't got to do all that. I can just you buy still it. pick it up. No. And this is why we're in the predicament we are with health-related issues. Convenience. Convenience, yes. Exactly. So, so this brings me into my next topic of, like, how can we break the medical dependency that has hold of us? Ooh, I think that's a tough one. Um Breaking the medical dependency. 
I think this is definitely going to be an individual uh, choice with people. Um, I definitely don't see it, at it, you know, as the masses. I think we're so far gone with the dependency of, you know, the medical field and working in the medical field directly and seeing it. I think, um, I don't think we're, we're, we'll ever get to the point to break the dependency. Um, I think individuals will have to make their choices to detach and um, and unlearn a lot of things. And for people, it's almost like red pill, blue pill, if y'all just stay in the matrix. And I think a lot of people would rather stay in ignorance. I think it's a lot of times because, like, you have to want it for yourself, you know. You have to want to change. But when it's not like people are being educated, even in that sense. If you go to the doctor because you have high blood pressure, not all doctors, but a good majority of them are just going to try to prescribe you a pill versus actually like what you do, actually telling them, okay, if you change your diet, this can help you. Like if we, I think if we had more doctors and, you know, doing that, but even then, like. And I think too is because even if they do tell you like, hey, you got to lay out the salty foods, again, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't want to do that. So a lot of yeah. people are just like, hey, can you just give me a pill so I can still enjoy these foods but still, you know what I'm saying, cope with this with this sickness. And I think that's that's the bad thing about it. Like, like again, I have my cake and eat it too kind people, of thing. People want to patch up everything but don't want to fix the main root of it. Like if you got to cut down salty foods, I don't understand why that's like such a big like, you know what I'm saying, rocket science for you. Like, oh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? People, people look at such like – at it like such a drag that I think that's what makes it difficult for them mm -hmm. because now yeah. they're they associate eating healthy with eating bland foods like baked chicken rice and broccoli mm -hmm. and just like it don't have to be flavorless like you said like we said we had it's so many spices and herbs that can add flavor without you having to you know what I'm saying OD on the salt to like cope with that I, th I think we haven't recognized or we don't pay attention to the fact that people are addicted to food. And the thing is, if, you know, the people above or the, you know, head honchos or the medical industry <laughs> or, you know, just stop and say, no, food is an addiction. Like, these people are addicted to food. Then we have to go to the back to, okay, the sugars. Like, okay, now the, the food industry, we need to change the food industry. Well, then when you change the food industry, then you, you, you mess with the pharmaceutical industry. So it's like all these industries would have to change to get people to, to, you know, release their dependency on the medical industry. And that's a lot of money. Lost. And, and again, I think, it, like you said, it, it's individual. Uh, we have to take the powers into our own hands. And it's understanding that the masses isn't always going to agree with you. And I feel like you can't be judgy on either side. Like, if somebody's willing to, like, hey, I don't want to depend on medication no more. I want to do this my own way. I want to go the holistic route. Nobody who's not doing that shouldn't be like, are you tripping, da, da, da. Like, we have science for a reason. The medical field and came this, this far for a reason. But people have to understand, like, I feel like the reason why people are more so taking up that holistic approach is because we're realizing, you know what I'm saying, the government's grip on, on everything. And we know the government's lied to us before. We know that the government doesn't mind sacrificing lives over, you know what I'm saying, experimentation, mm -hmm. money, and stuff like that. The fact that you can patent a vaccine and make money off of it shows that the medical field ain't always doesn't always have your best intention at heart. And granted, some people in the medical field might, it's still on you to, you know what I'm saying, like listen to them you to do the research, you to sit there and go find the best route for you. I think we just, sometimes we just listen too much to others instead of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Again, we have the internet in the palm of our hands, yet we don't use it how it should be used. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, you can find out anything on the internet. And, yeah. you know what I'm saying, that, that can be a bad thing, too, because there's a lot of misinformation out there, too. But by educating yourself, by researching, you, you learn how to navigate, you know what I'm saying, the misinformation. Because, again, there's plenty of studies out there that, you know what I'm saying, show the correlation with foods and how we eat them and how they relate to disease and sickness. Yet people are just like, eh. Yeah. 
Yeah, they'll watch a whole documentary on it, and then like it's nothing. They'll go right back. To like some people will change their life because like what the health. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then a couple months later, just, <laughs> you know, and then the the influence of of people around you also, and you know, friends and family can kind of take you back in the same path that you're in. But you know, it's and we definitely touched on that before too, like having a good support system. Because sometimes your family and friends can make fun of you so much where you just like, well, man, I might as well. Exactly. And it's just you gotta you gotta learn how not to compromise yourself. I think that's the biggest thing. Just not compromising yourself. Stick to your guns. This is the life that you want to live. Do it. I and mean, in my in my course that I created, the biggest thing that I tell people is to figure out what your why is. Like your why, my why, the same one. Skincare. You know, our skin was breaking out. You had high blood pressure. Like if your why is that great, you know, make the changes for it. Exactly. Absolutely. So what? So you went vegan. You know what I'm saying? You started cooking for yourself. What made you decide? Because obviously you said, like you said, you work in the medical field. What made you like, you know what? Let me start, you know what I'm saying, bringing these foods that I'm cooking to the masses. Let me start, you know what I'm saying, cooking for people. Let me a cheese vegan kitchen and let me show the world that, you know what I'm saying, we can eat better. Okay, so originally like where I worked and when I first got into the healthcare field, it was um, kind of like a lower socioeconomic area and majority of the people that were coming into the hospital were black and brown people and just almost the just like the lack of knowledge the ignorance the you know lack of willpower to like want to do better you know I would just drop these hints on them you know and like it it was a subtle thing of wanting to just like plant a seed with them and then it became like okay we're leading in these like where I'm, I'm literally, you know, body bagging people because they had a, a, a massive heart attack or, you know, they, you know, had a blood clot and it took their life or they, you know, had all these hitch- issues and I'm body bagging people, you know? And then it got to the point like, okay, so who, who and I'm, I'm looking around and I'm like, well, who's our advocate for health and wellness? Not just like the standard American diet, health and wellness but like a real nutrient plant-based health and wellness advocate. Last one that was like super big that I saw that's now gone, Dr. Sebi. And um, I think Queen Afua. And there's a, a few others, but nobody that it's like around my age and relatable. So a lot of people, they look at them like, well, you know, they're older. You know, they don't really, it's not cool to them or it's not, mainstream enough for them so then I was like okay you know what I'll use my platform I'll do whatever I can I'm gonna cook my foods I'm gonna push it I'm gonna promote it I'm gonna research not just like you know googling or webmd or uh wikipedia but like meta-analysis uh systemic reviews like peer-reviewed literature hundreds and hundreds of journals I'm always researching and researching and I do that I take it and I'm sharing it I share it to on my social media, I share it to friends, I share it to family, coworkers, and I just constantly push it. And then I've been blessed to be able to speak publicly uh, with different, you know, platforms, and I just share it. And I'm like, I feel like it, it's picking up, and I'm getting good feedback. I'm getting bad. I get a little bad feedback with some of it, but I, I'm getting good feedback and. People are like, hey, you know, this made me change this. And when you said this, it really made me think about this. And it's like really catching hold. And I'm like, okay, so like we're making little changes and that's that's what counts. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep pushing it and pushing it until I get to an even bigger platform and I can push it. And I, I'm at the point where I feel like this is my purpose in life. So it's it's not a burden to me. It's not like I'm not doing work. It's fun. It's exciting you know and I'm like okay well if I can follow in those in those same footsteps of the people before me that push this lifestyle even if it's against the grain I'm gonna push it I love I, that I was just about to say the same thing <laughs> yeah, it's so beautiful I, 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 like I love it absolutely and do you do, have you like you know what I'm saying received like a lot of pushback from like peers in your own like field um not really peers in my own field. So it's almost like um, I, I'm, I'm pretty, 
you know, heavily Bible based. So uh, one scripture that comes to mind is don't cast your pearls among the swine. So if someone is not willing to receive some information, I'm not going to keep grilling them with information. So I'll give someone some information. But if they're like a brick wall, like, well, then I'm not going to keep giving you my pearls. I'm not going to keep, you know. So if I notice that you're already like, I don't, I don't keep pushing it. I am pushy with my family because you're my family and I want you to live long. I love you. I want you to live long. Exactly. But uh, close friends, I've received pushback and it's like, I mean, you know, especially with different views on the jab, we, you know, we'll go head to head on some things and it's like, they will recite what the media, regurgitate what the media says. And, um, you know, again, to each his own on that. But, you know, like I said, I, I'm a bit more gung-ho with people that are closer to me and in my circle than those on the outside. On the outside, I'll baby you a little bit, you know, because I don't know you. You don't really know me. But the pushback I do, like on social media, some certain things. I think the most recent thing I posted was uh, that excessive masturbation is – just the negative effects of excessive masturbation. And I got, my DMs went crazy. And it's like, the keyword is excessive. <laughs> Please read, you know? And you People know, don't read as much. No just more. angry and it's just like, okay, like a lot of the pushback with a lot of things that I get, it's like when I now see your 10-year challenge photo, I'm like, I, okay, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue. She's dropping the mic just like I ain't gotta argue with you. <laughs> nah, definitely. And I think that's a lot of things like people don't read no more. And the pandemic has caused a lot of like division. Mm. And I think that that's the problem too. So now the government has pinned us against each other. And yes, I do say the government because again, you you saying one thing coming back months later saying something different. We all got the, you know what I'm saying, video. We all got the clips. We all yeah. see that y'all don't know what y'all doing. Yet, y'all instead of advocating for the jab, and now you're making people who don't have it feel some type of way because now you're accusing them of being the problem. So people who did get it, now they're accusing those people of being the problem. Mm-hmm. And the people who don't get it, they're like, nah, y'all the problem. So it's, it's so much division that everybody wants to get pushed back to stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you really giving pushback to me telling you to eat better and go outside and exercise mm-hmm. than to sit in the house and eat the way you said of eating? Because, again, when we had the first, like, when it first hit and everybody went to the stores and stuff, bought up to all the tissue paper, you see, i seen so many people with their grocery uh, carts full of, like, junk food, cereals, yeah. chips, candies and all that i'm like all the fruits and vegetables were still available everything was still available. like bro you you doing this in a pandemic like you you're just nurturing this disease at this point exactly and prior to the the disease the leading cause of death was still heart disease so it's like your your chances of dying i think it's like one in three or two thirds of people i don't i'm I'm not i don't know off head the, the number but it's like die a year from heart disease and we're not that's something to be scared of no absolutely because that can affect anybody and again you you clogging your arteries with all these type of stuff because again once you're taking this food you're not not thinking about what it's doing to your body you're just i i need a fuel ma'am i'm eating i'm hungry makes you happy yeah it makes you <laughs> happy because it makes your your mind release the dopamine it, you know what i'm saying brings pleasure to you so you're like oh yeah cool you're not thinking about it afterwards so you're not thinking about I my sodium spiking, my insulin spiking. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I you're not drinking water because that's what we talked about in the last episode was people's reluctance to drink a lot of water. So you know what I'm saying? Now you, you know your kidneys not processing how they need to, and you know what I'm saying? You you're clogging your arteries with all these animal fats and stuff like that. So now your heart's not pumping the blood like it needs to. Now it gets clogged up. Now you're at like 30 years old and are you already have like a mild heart attack, strokes, and stuff like that. It's just like, this shouldn't be happening to you. Mm -hmm. And it's now happening younger and younger. So now we're seeing young children now have high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, and all these health-related illnesses are in children. And I think uh, studies show, like, we're going to be the first generation or we're now about to be the generation that outlives our children because the food is getting that bad. 
So the children are like, and I see it now, like I've seen my age mates die of, you know, health related issues. And it's like, whoa. And then cancer, it's like, it just sprouts out of nowhere and it's taken over people. But it's like, these foods that we have have the ability to fight cancer. They have antioxidants. They have phytochemicals. They have all these things to prevent that, but we're not incorporating that in our diet, so we see a spike in all those. Yeah, a lot of anti-inflammatory spices that can help. Uh, again, food food can be either your death or your medicine mm-hmm. at the end of the day, and you got to realize in order to make a lot of these medications and stuff like that, they're going into the Amazon. They're hunting down, you know what I'm saying, these plants that can help you. So that should tell you something that, you know what I'm saying, the power is in our fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. And it's always been something that's been kind of advocated. But even when it comes down to the outdated food pyramid, which we'll probably get into in another episode, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, just how they group your foods. Oh, this is the standard. Mm-hmm. And just like everybody's body is different. So it's, it's about learning your body and what works for you. Because, again, I don't tell anybody to go plant-based, but you got to figure out what works for your body. Moderation and excess will always be, you know what I'm saying, either the key to you where you want to be at or the death of you. Mm-hmm. So, <sighs> America. America. <laughs> Dude, that, that's the one thing about it. It's just this is the American way of life. This is the American diet. This is these are the issues that we are encountering in this country where it's just like, man, it shouldn't be this much of a headache. And we're supposed to be the most advanced healthcare system, yet we're the sickest. So it's 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 some it's something is not adding up. And it's of course what it boils down to is our diet. And I used to always like when you were little, you know, you're always told like America's this great country and like, you know what I'm saying? You always they always put that propaganda that a lot of the other countries hate us and stuff like that or like look at us a certain, a certain type of way. But as I got older, I'm like, I understand that. Cause I'm looking at this country like this. <laughs> like, man, if y'all bomb bomb us, don't don't blame us for this. Yeah. But then you got people who, you know, they love this country. They support it. You know, they want to make America great again. It's, just, it's nothing great about this country. It's ne- nothing that's ever been great about this country. Uh, you definitely have an opportunity here to come here and make a living. And that's about it. That's about it. Because <laughs> everything else about this country sucks. The health care sucks. Uh, we could definitely, I think the problem just more so is like the coverage. A lot of people aren't covered. They don't have insurance. Mm-hmm. That's a big problem. Medications are expensive. Doctor procedures are expensive. Mm-hmm. Everything is so expensive and high in this country. It's just, uh But it's like it, if you wouldn't even need that if, I mean, you know, God forbid you get into a car accident, you got to go to the hospital. You know, I understand that. But, like, as far as, like, procedures and and medications regarding your health, if you had the knowledge and the education, but it's, it's, it's difficult when, you know, you don't make enough money, you know, the odds are against you with just the cards you're dealt in life. Um, there's fast food restaurants on every corner of where you live. They like liquor stores at this point. <laughs> there's no, you know, fresh produce around you. Um, it's I, I understand because a lot of communities have food deserts. Exactly, and I understand. I understand. I understand, and that's why I'm I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm trying to, you know, even. If you can't do organic at first, you know, just get to the point where, you know, you are conscious about what you're eating and, and you are home cooking your foods because going out there and buying your food and off dollar menus and all that stuff, it's it's just going to cause you more problems than the situation that you're already in. Uh, absolutely. And again, if you're struggling with, you know what I'm saying, finding out how to eat healthy, what, what to eat, again, Check her page out. She got amazing food on there that's going to help you. It's going to heal you. Again, check her out. It's Chiwe or Bucci at Cheese Vegan Kitchen. I've been Jesse the Truth. This is Tierica. And this has been the Grove Podcast, Health and Wellness. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We want y'all to be better. And again, check us out. We got more episodes coming to y'all soon. Peace out.